What's up guys, today I want to show you what I think is one of the safest and easiest ways to use BitTorrent on your computer. So right now, a lot of ISPs, even if you use BitTorrent legally, throttle your connection to slow down and to discourage BitTorrent use. This is one way to get around it and to protect yourself just in case something does happen with it. So right now I'm running Ubuntu 12.04 LTS in VMware Workstation 9. I use this virtualization software because so far it's worked pretty well for me, but this method also works in VirtualBox, Virtual PC, Q Emulator, and pretty much all the other virtualization softwares. So the reason I chose Ubuntu over, say, Windows XP or Windows 7 is because Windows XP and Windows 7 under OpenVPN have what's called a DNS link problem. And let me show you what I mean, and if you have your own VPN, which we will be using in this video, you will also be able to test yours to see if you have that issue. So on this website, dnsleaktest.com, you get to see your IP address, which I've blocked right now, and you get to check for DNS leaks. And right now, you'll see that since I'm in the United States, I have all United States DNS servers. So now, I'm going to connect to a VPN. And theoretically, when you connect to your VPN, you should not have any DNS servers from your country if you're connecting to a VPN in a different country. So <clears throat> I'm going to go back to the home. You see the country has changed. And then check for DNS leaks. And we do not have any in the USA anymore. On Windows XP and Windows 7, Oftentimes you have a DNS leak which means you can still connect to DNS servers inside your country with your ISP and that can pose some issues, some security issues if you continue to use that without solving the issues. So the first step in torrenting or using BitTorrent through Ubuntu is to install your client. Transmission is included but for safety purposes I'm using Vuz which you can find easily through the Ubuntu Software Center. Just type in Vuz and install this. I have it installed already right here, so my option only says remove, but on yours it should say install. And the next step, you need to choose a VPN service and add it into Ubuntu. Right now, for this video, I'm using Keppard VPN, their Netherlands servers, and it's an okay service. I'm using it because I still have a trial from when I was using it on Android and I invited some people but for future use I'm going to be purchasing a copy of private internet access for a year and at the price of thirty nine dollars for just a bit over three dollars a month the safety provided I think is definitely worth it so the next step we need to install the OpenVPN software into Ubuntu so you can do that by just using really two commands the first command, which is this one I put in, I, I will also include these in the description so you can just copy and paste them. You just run this command, this installs the OpenVPN Network Manager. I have it installed already so I'm not going to run it. And then the next command is somewhat optional. You can either restart your computer if you don't want to run this or you can just restart your Network Manager and everything will be taken care of. So then, the next step is to go to your VPN service and download its configuration files for Ubuntu or Linux. I have those already downloaded for Keppard and for a different VPN, typically they're available on their website under support and setup. So I have my configuration files saved right here for OpenVPN. And each one of these has is for a different server and uses either OVPN, through UDP, TCP, or some other protocol. So to, in order to add a VPN connection, you go onto your networks, you edit connections, you go to VPN, and then you click import. Now I'm going to import another server from Keppard to show you how to do it. So you navigate to your configurations, you pick one, like I'll use United Kingdom UDP, for this one. And then the only thing you need to do typically is you just need to enter your username 
and I enter your password and I click save and then in order to connect you just click on your network icon VPN connections and connect to your VPN service so the main reason I use this torrent client is because it has the option to restrict network communications to just one tunnel so the way you do this is you go to tools options you have to choose advanced in order to get network settings and you go under connection advanced network settings and if you're using open VPN which I highly recommend you do you have to bind your local IP address or interface to tunnel zero just type in ton and zero at the end and this means that all traffic through this program will have to be run through your VPN service and make sure on the bottom to check enforce IP bindings even when interfaces are not available the main reason I'm doing this is because in the event your VPN drops when you're downloading something typically it's on Windows without any extra software, on Ubuntu with any extra software, your torrent will continue on your regular internet service, which is not a good thing. With this checked, you no longer have that problem. If you have a torrent that's running, it will just automatically stop and until you come back and reconnect to your service. Another important thing you should know to use is checkmytorrentip.com. So this is the website, and what it does is it tracks, you generate a torrent file, you open it in your BitTorrent client, and then it tracks your IP. So here are two IP addresses from Kepper that I have been using previously. It gives you the address, the last seen time in your client. And then down here is your browser IP address. So right now I'm going to show you what happens if a connection drops for your VPN which is probably the most dangerous thing and most likely thing to happen so let's say I'm just downloading something and then suddenly the connection will drop I'll just disable it and first let me show you that we have acquired our IP from Kepard right here it's May 4th here's the correct time this website updates your IP once every minute and then now we'll see Let's disconnect VPN connection. Immediately, you're seeing these two downloads <coughs> reduce speed. <coughs> so now these downloads have stopped. And then let's go back to this client. Let's reload the page. see my browser IP has changed however my IP address for, from the torrent client has not changed and since this updates once every minute let's give it the benefit of the doubt and then let's wait a bit more the last time was updated at minute 10 currently it's minute 12 but we'll continue to refresh the page and you see the IP address of the browser, which is my home IP address, has not been used for VPN. So with this method, you can leave your torrent on overnight, and even if your connection drops, you won't have to worry about being tracked under your own ISP. So that's it. After these steps, you can just download torrents regularly. You have some extra peace of mind. and you don't have to slow your internet connection down by connecting to a VPN on your regular computer like outside of your virtual machine and if you want an extra level of security you can download all your files into your virtual machine only and then copy them back into your main operating system this is full isolation and is very unlikely you'll be able to get any viruses or any other malware from using these downloads so that's it for this time and I hope this video has helped you and I'll see you next time.